All right, so today is Friday, February 10th, and what we're doing is we're going to be doing for the next day, two days, three days, whatever it takes, we're going to be doing a review of everything we've done thus far in this class. So I asked you to take this, I gave you 10 minutes to create a C console program called Payroll One that asked the user to enter the number of hours they worked and their pay rate. Calculate the gross pay. All right, that's it. Put everything in main. All right, so I'm going to come in, start up Visual Studio, file, new, project. In fact, what I'm going to do here very quickly, try to do it very quickly. I'm going to create myself a new subfolder that's called Payroll in Class. I'm going to throw everything into there. All right, and I'm going to call this one Payroll 1 because that's what we were told to do. So, And I want it to be a console application. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here, and as I always do, I'm going to add the line of code using static system.console. That shouldn't be anything new, not a big stretch of the imagination or anything. And then I'm going to paste in that comment that's got everything I'm supposed to be doing. All right? At least it gives me a starting point. Okay. So with that there, I've got payroll one. I want to ask for the hours worked and the hourly rate, but they're all supposed to be constants. So the first thing I'm going to, I'm going to do here is I'm going to <clears throat> declare and initialize constants. All right. I'm going to have a double. Oops, sorry. Const double, and I'm going to call it min hours. I'm going to set that equal to 0, 0.00. Const double max hours that I'm going to set equal to 84.00. Const double min rate that we said is what? 10. and const double min or max rate, which is equal to 100. Now that should make sense to each and every one of you, okay? Then I'm going to declare, heck, let's just grab this, and initialize my variables, all right? Okay, so I'm gonna have a double, I'll just call it hours worked, and I'm going to set that equal to 0, 0.0. And I'm going to have another double that I'm going to call hourly rate. And I'm going to set that equal to 0, 0.0. All right? So there's all that stuff. Then I want to ask the user to enter in an hours worked and enter in an hourly rate. All right? So write, please enter hours worked. And I'm letting them know it's supposed to be between 0 and 84. All right. And hours worked equal read line. And why is that looking like that? Oh, yes. Yeah, you're right. Convert dot to double. Thank you. Read line. All right. And then I'll do, I'm just going to copy it down. And I'm going to say, please enter hourly rate. And that's supposed to be between 10 and 100. So this will be hourly rate. And then I've got gross. Did I make a gross up here? No. Double, double gross pay equals 0, 0.0 and I'm going to say gross pay equal hours time hours work times hourly rate and then finally I'm going to do a right line put a backslash n in there and say I'm going to put in three three right lines so hours hours worked And remember, I, there's two ways I can do this. I'm not going to go through both of them right now. But I want this to be to two decimal places, F2, 
two. So hourly rate. and gross pay and that'll be C and that'll be C gross pay okay <clears throat> any questions on any of that that should be something everybody in here should be able to, in 10 minutes, you should be able to pound that out. All right? So let's run it. Enter hours worked, 40. Enter hourly rate, 10. Oops, I forgot my read line, as I always seem to do. I think you accidentally deleted it. Did I? OK. Yeah. It's like when you put in gross pay. Yeah, I got the gross pay. You're right. So that's hourly rate. This will be gross pay. All right, so let's try that again. 40, 10, hours of work 40, hourly rate 10, gross pay 400. Questions on that? Because, I, and I'm being serious here, if you don't understand how to do that, then you have to either email me or come see me during my office hours and let me know. Because everybody should get this by now. All right. All right. So you said you all got that. I yes. So you put the, <clears throat> the zero colon C and like the early rates list. For yes. That? The other way we could have done all this, just so you know, I'll repeat. I'll repeat all of it here. There is neither one is more efficient than the other one is. So I could have done this. I could have said hours worked. And I could have said here plus hours worked dot two string and then set in here F2. So that would have worked. And I need another paren. Same thing. And then the same thing here. But I'm just going to, I'm going to put them both in there just so you can see that they will look exactly the same. Which is fine. And I don't, I personally have no preference, none. It's whatever one seems easier to you would be the one I'd recommend that you use. So these should look identical to one another. Should. We'll see, we'll see whether or not they do. So, 40, 10, and they do. I was going to say, does C automatically do the... Uh, C means currency. Yeah, but does it automatically do the two decimal yes, places? Yes, it does. Two decimal places, it puts the dollar sign in, and it puts any commas in that are necessary. Oh. Questions on any of this? It doesn't matter if it's capital in? No. Same with the F here. They can both be capitalized. So if I come back in here, C, C, F. Well, now I make $19 an hour. But you see it works. Okay? All right. So that's the first one. Now, what I want you to do next is I want you to copy that whole folder. So I want you to grab the folder that you just did. So go back into here. All right. And now I've got this payroll in class, so that's great because it was supposed to go in there. But copy the entire folder to another folder. Call the outside folder payroll 2. 
Now I'm going to find out where I copied this to, but that's fine. So do this. Copy the folder payroll 1, make a copy of it, call it payroll 2. Now, to find those variables that we just did, hourly rate, hours worked, and gross pay, to find those in May. All right, again, make them doubles. Again, make your constants. Then go back and write four separate procedures and have main call each one of these procedures. For hours, make it a ref parameter. For rate, make it a ref parameter, etc. And you've got, let's give you 15 minutes to do this. Same requirements that you had above, except you're putting them into procedures and you're having main call each procedure. So it's 921 at 935. I'm going to go over this one. taping this so I'm going to pause the video while we're doing this. All right, so what, again what you're supposed to do for this one is copy folder 1 to folder 2, define all the variables in main, then go back and make separate procedures to input, one for inputting hours, one for inputting rate, one for calculating the gross, and one for doing the output. And main is supposed to be a driver that calls each one of them. So I can close this. This was my first one. Save all. And close solution. And I'm going to open up the second one. The copy that I just made. Oh, I don't want to do a new. I want to do an open. So right now it works and looks exactly like the first one because I haven't put in the comments yet. So I'm going to do that now. There's number two, so there's the comments. All right, so I want to define everything in main. I'm going to take the constants and I'm going to define those outside of main. All right, it is considered proper programming protocol to take your constants and make those global. That's not considered a problem that I know of in any language. All right. So going back then to main, I'm, gonna, I'm declaring my variables right here. So I've, I've got the code in here, so I'm going to grab this code, all this code that I've got in here. I'm just going to grab all of it for right now, and I'm going to just copy it to the clipboard, just for right now. And I want to put that into some new place. So it's all right there. All right. So now what I want to do, and I'm not going to worry about the read line. I'll play with that later. I want to have I want main to do three things. I want it to call I'm going to call these input hours worked. You can call it anything you want. There's nothing special about these names. Input hourly rate calculate gross pay and display inputs and outputs. Make sense? All right, nothing special about those names. They're just what I happen to call them. All right, so let's do them in order. And now, when we input hours worked, 
where we have to pass in the hours worked, and you were told to pass that in as a ref parameter, correct? So, ref hours worked. All right, so there's that. And this will be a private, this was it, this static, static void. Void uh, input hours worked ref double. And I'm just going to call it a dub hw for hours worked. Again, I could call it the same thing. It's not a problem, but I didn't. Okay. Now I've got the code already in here. So I'm just going to paste that back in, and after I do that, I'm going to add in a read line. All right, so that's got to be HW now, because that's what I call it. All that makes sense? I'm calling hours worked. I'm passing it as a ref parameter, meaning that I can change it. Since I'm passing it as a ref parameter, my type returned here is void. Now, I don't want to confuse you, but I want you to look up on the screen here for a minute, everybody. All right, what I could have done, I didn't do this, but what I could have done here, I'm going to put it in here, but then I'm going to remove it because I don't want to, I'll just comment it out. I could have said here, hours worked equal, and then I could have called it, you know, input hours worked. Like that, I could have done that. And then in here, then this, and I'm going to just comment all this out for a second. Then I would have written that one. Like this. All right. Then it would have returned a double. And no, would have been no ref there, and I wouldn't have passed anything in. And then I would have had to have said here double HW equals 0, 0.0. All right? And then I would have done a return HW. So there's two ways that you can write this. I asked you to use the ref, but if you don't use the ref, then you can just set the variable equal to something and then pass that back. Now, that should make sense to all of you, all right, because we've done those both ways. So you might say, okay, we've done them both ways. I think it's a lot easier to do it the, the second way you showed me. Why are we even going over it the other way? Because in some languages, you basically do it using the equivalent of ref parameters all the time. All right. So again, you move this up. All right, so now our input hours worked is a ref. If it's a ref up there, it has to be a ref here. Hours worked, uh, actual parameter, HW, formal parameter. All right, and we're saying, please enter hours worked. We read it in, and the same exact stuff we did before, but we're doing it in its own routine. Does that all make sense? All right, then in here, so I, this one I don't need anymore. All right. In fact, I can just comment that out. Yes. Do you need both read lines in there? No. Okay. Just, just curious. This one I won't need now. All right. So now I'm going to come in and do the same thing, but I'm going to have here ref hourly rate. All right. So that's how I change that one. Now I'm going to put that one up here just so you can see. I, I want you to be able to see everything as we're doing it. So this is going to be input hourly rate. That'll be HR. And this will be input hourly rate. And that's got to be between 10 and 100. So that's HR equals this convert to double read line. All right? Ref hourly rate, ref 
double HR what does it like here. You're missing an L, an hourly. I sure am, thank you. All right, that should make sense to you. All right, and I'm trying to show you totally modular code. All right, we have three variables. We have a routine to input each variable. We're supposed to output everything. We have a routine to do that. So calculate gross pay. It's going to look pretty much the same. Ref gross pay. All right. And I'm going to copy this, even though I'm not. I'm going to change this one pretty dramatically. So this one will be a static void. Calculate. Calculate gross pay. All right. Now for this one, it's just gross pay, but. All right, so I don't want this to be HR. I'm going to put in a GP there for gross pay. All right, I'm going to get rid of all this stuff for now. Okay, notice now it works, but does it make sense to you that I still need to pass in the hours worked and the hourly rate? Yeah. But I don't have to pass those in as ref parameters. Why? Why, Evan? Because you're not changing them. If you're not going to change a parameter, you should not pass it in as a ref parameter. You can pass everything in the world, as many refs as you want, but you can mix and match these. So I'm going to pass in here, hours worked, hourly rate, and a ref for gross pay, which means I'm going to have to come in here and say double, hours worked, double, hourly rate. Of course, you should spell words right. That always helps. Let me move this over. All right, so now it just becomes return. In fact, I don't even really, uh, yeah, no, not a return, I'm sorry. GP for gross pay equals hours worked times hourly rate. Look at that and tell me whether or not that makes sense. This is stuff you have to understand. I don't know any other way to put it to you. You're going to be doing this next semester. You're going to be doing this. We're going to do this same exact stuff in Java. And it's going to look virtually the same. All right, I've mentioned before, this is my opinion. Microsoft does not agree with this. But C Sharp is just Microsoft's ripoff of Java. So once you've learned this language, you pretty much have learned Java. Are there differences? Of course there are. But logic is logic in any language. If I, could, if I could literally get a sledgehammer, walk up to each one of you, you know, put a two by four in between your, your eyes and, and have that put logic into your head, I would do it. But people learn logic in different ways. You've got to come up with, with some way that makes sense to you that you're able to take a problem, break it down into components, figure out those components, put them together, and get a logical result. All right? Now, the only thing that's left is display outputs. And I'm going to cheat a little bit here. I am going to, I'm going to take these two. So I got to pass hours worked, hourly rate, and gross pay. All right? But before I do this, OK? I'm going to, I'll copy these two lines here just so I have, well, I'll copy all this so I have something here. And this will be display inputs and outputs. But remember, if we want to, we can use the same names. All right, double HR, double, double, and this will be double GP. We can use the same names. I just don't want to. All right, but now I want to go back and grab all this stuff that I had in here before. That's this. Great. So that's the whole program. But let me just do this. I'm going to save this and let me run it and make sure I didn't break anything. 
40, 10, oops, 10, and of course you asked about the read lines. Yeah, I, I don't need, I don't need the read line here anymore. I don't need that read line. I don't need that read line. All right, I, I didn't have one there, but it would be nice to put one here so the program stops. All right, let's try it again. 40, 10. So the output, would you agree? It's identical to the previous one. Would everybody agree with that? It's meant to be. It's the same Flamin program. It really is. The only difference is now, and I'm going to just get rid of all this stuff because I showed you that. So I'm going to get rid of all that that I put in here. The way I would normally write this is I like, you know, maybe again, because I've got a little bit of an anal nature, I, I like to put these in order. Now, the reason they weren't in order before was because I was building them one at a time to show them to you. All right, but I'm going to flip the order of these two. So we had in here, we declared all of our variables in main. As per your requirements, for these three routines, you were supposed to pass in the variables that you were changing as ref parameters. Ref for reference, okay? Nobody's asked this. If I was going to do this in the C programming language, for example, if I did it in there, I would, instead of this ref, I would have an ampersand right there. And instead of the, in having a ref in here, all right, in the actual routine, I would use an asterisk. But it works the same way. All right? Is there anything that's in this routine, in this program, that doesn't make sense? Yes? I just don't understand, like, all the parameters can have different names. Then... In here? Yeah. Like they, don't, they don't have to. I just did that because it's much easier for me to type HW than it has always worked. And just to show you that formal parameters do not have to be named the same thing as actual parameters. This would work, again, if I came back in here and changed all those HWs to always worked, all those HRs, in fact, I should be able to do it like this, HW, always worked. Right. and GP to gross pay. All right. The only way this is going to break now is if when I changed all those, if it was in part of a word, you know what I'm saying? But I don't think it was, so let's check. Yep, there were errors. So let's check what those errors were. See this? Look at my error. All right, and I don't even know what the heck that thing is used for, so I'm going to comment that out. All right, and now I'm going to run the program again. <clears throat> 40, 10, looks exactly the same. And now, as per your kind of your request, now the name of our actual parameters is the exact same as the name of our formal parameters. Again, I would put these just because I like to be able to read everything that I'm working on. See, what, I'm going to disagree with you for one reason, okay? The way that the compiler works, okay, the way that the compiler works is it throws away any code that it doesn't need, all right? And to be honest with you, in here, the only thing that the compiler needs to know is double, double, double. That's it. The names are irrelevant to the compiler. The names are only used for you. All right, and that's why I did it that way. I mean, literally, we, this could have been X, Y, and Z, right? It doesn't matter. Again, if it's easier for you to do it like that, then do it like that. But again, if I was going to call this thing multiple times in a program, and I was going to maybe be passing different things in there every time, I probably wouldn't want, my, you know, 
those formal parameters to be the same name as my actual parameters. I don't know. I just need to come up with a naming convention because it confuses me. Like each method has its own parameters and own order to its parameters. And, uh, yeah, the system does. If if for some reason, okay, if for some reason, let's say I'm not going to do this, but let's say I came in here, right in there where, where it's in blue, and I had flipped the order of these. In other words, this said, let's just say I said double gross pay, comma, double hours worked, comma, double hourly rate. Let's say I'd done that. Then the system would think that's the gross pay because it's all doing it positionally. All right. All right, well, we could take a look at it in a second, but everybody else cool with everything. All right, because then we're moving on. Now I'm going to have to make a copy of something here, so give me a second. All right, so I want you now to go and make a brand new GUI program. I saw a C sharp GUI program you call payroll three. All right. Again, it should ask the user that information. It should again use constants and it should again calculate, etc. Don't worry about putting all the code in main. But in other words, take that first one that you did, all right, and it's not going to make make a lot of sense to say put it in main. Also, one more thing. So add calculate. Clear and exit buttons. These should all work. Some of you on your test, you're putting buttons in, you're putting no code in the buttons. To me, that's, there's, that's no better than not having a button. If you're going to put a clear button in there, it should work. All right, so I'll, I'll give, help you with that. Oh, uh, I'm going to. So I'll tell you what, it's 9.54. What I will do is I'm going to start this up at quarter after 10. All right, so try to get it done. Try to, sl to slam a break in there, too, if you get the time. All right, if you look up here, I've already created my interface. It's very simple. It's not pretty, but it's very functional. And I not only created it, I named it. So label hours worked, text box hours worked, label Lab, come on, label hourly pay, text box hourly pay. Oh, one is pay and one is rate, so I want to change that. All right, so label hourly rate, text box hourly rate, label gross pay, text box gross pay, button calculate, button clear, button exit. All that makes sense? Again, that's something, you know, I also went back in here and I quickly set the tab order and I set the window start position so it's going to start up in the middle. Okay? But, so I'm going to want to put code in for my calculate button, I'm going to want to put code in for my clear button, I'm going to want to put code in for my exit button. The exit button, I put that code up on the screen, that's this right here. So I'm just going to throw that right away. There, there's my exit button code. I can test that right away. So I can come in here, run this, check my exit button. Okay. If I say no, I stay in the program. If I say yes, I'm out. I don't want to go over that anymore. Does that make sense to everybody? Okay. Now, please look up on the screen. I'm asking you this. What are the four things I want to have happen when I click the clear button? Number one. What? Clear the, text box. clear the first text box. Number two, clear the second text box. Number three, clear, I made that another text box. You might have made it a label. Number four, what's the last thing we want to do? Set the focus. All right? Simple enough, right? So, to clear, I want text box hourly. I guess I want, it doesn't matter if you do them in order or not, but hours worked dot text equal double quote, double quote, text box hourly rate dot text 
equal double quote double quote all right text box gross pay dot text equals double quote double quote and text box hours worked dot focus now I'm asking you does that all make sense so I'm going to save and I'm going to run this I, I remember I can put anything I want in here or in here I can't put anything in here because I made it read only sometimes what I do is I don't make it read only until I've tested it and it works then I'll make it read only but here it's okay so clear what happened everything was cleared and there's my cursor all right so like I said if I wanted to just to test it I could come back in here and I could say well you know that thing is read only but for right now I'm not gonna make it read only so I'm gonna remove the read onlyness from it that way I can run this again I can put in garbage here 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 I can click clear and I see that all three of them clear all right and there's my cursor so I can exit one more thing and you heard this already from me sorry if I'm being super repetitive but what I like to do is I like to click on a blank space on the form set my accept button to my calculate click on the form again set my cancel button to clear this is the kind of thing I'm not just saying this I'm not trying to pull stuff past you if you're gonna get hired this is the kind of thing that will get you hired because you went the extra route and you did things they you know you have potential employers that may check stuff like this all right not all but some may all right so my calculate button well let's see I mean it's, I got a simple calculation to do right so first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create two variables and I'm going to say double hours worked and I'm gonna set that equal to convert dot to double now I'm gonna put this on two lines because otherwise I'm gonna run out of room in fact no I don't have to I'll just shrink that way down How's that? and that's gonna be text box hours worked dot text and if you are copying this down you didn't write this in you got a problem I don't care who you are you got a problem because this should be this should make a lot of sense to you by now it just plain should double hourly rate equals I'm just gonna steal this and that's going to be I don't want that and that's gonna be hourly rate here and then finally double double gross pay what is that equal to yeah tell me the, tell me what I'm typing in here hours worked times hourly rate and the order in which you do those doesn't matter and then finally I've got to go and stuff that back in so I have to say text box whoops text box gross was it gross pay or just gross I don't know yep text box gross pay dot text equals gross pay dot to string C that's the way you do it almost always you do it that way for um, for GUI programs okay so and as Cal as uh, Colin mentioned before that C could be a capital it doesn't matter so I'm gonna save this and I'm gonna run it kind of nice there's my cursor 40 hit tab 10 I can hit enter boom it's in there don't be concerned with formatting this stuff did you hear what I said don't be concerned with that what's important is the answer here but now I can come in here and I can clear and I can do it all over if I want when I'm done I can exit all right now again I'm asking you you can see all the code here for those two buttons is there anything in there that does not make sense all right then you might have guessed it's coming so I want you to implement the, 
you know, copy program three to pro so copy your pro your folder for program three. So copy folder payroll three to payroll four. All right. And implement it, but use all the same requirements except write separate methods and have each button click, you know, click call that method. So in, in other words, I'm only going to give you really five minutes. So what do you want to do? You want to just grab that code that you've already written, pull it out of there, put it in its own routine. That's it. Put this back in case you need any of it. So I'm going to just do mine real quick. I'm just going to copy my stuff over here.
So if you look up on the screen here, what have I changed? Well, my calculate, all I did was I, I wrote another routine called calculate gross pay. And I took that same code and moved it in there. In my clear, I called clear inputs and outputs. I removed all that code and put it that in its own routine. And the same with the exit. All right. And let me tell you, no one's asked, but let me tell you, you might say, I, get, I get all that. Why not just leave it in the click routine? Yes, you could. But what ends up happening over time is that routine gets bigger and bigger and bigger as you want to put more advanced stuff in there. Pretty soon in the click routine for the button, it's hundreds of lines long. All right, it just happens. It does. All right. And now somebody says, oh, we, you know, we don't want the buttons anymore. You know, we don't want those buttons. So what we're going to do is we're going to remove all that, you know, the, the buttons from there, and we're going to put it into menu options. Okay. So somebody comes in and in their, in their zeal to get it done quickly, they remove the buttons and they remove the code that goes along with them. Now all that code's gone if you didn't back it up. Again, don't think that stuff hasn't happened and doesn't happen. It does all the time. All right. All right. So then I'm going to have you come back and do this. Not that. <clears throat> we did two GUIs, after, but, but first we did the two, um, the two console programs, okay? So now what I want you to do is this. I want you to copy that payroll 2, which is the second console program that you did. Copy it to payroll 5, I guess, all right? All this stuff will be the same, except add this. Add a check for overtime. And overtime is going to be defined at greater than 40 hours. For any hours worked over 40 hours, pay employee... Come on. Time and a half. Does that make sense? So just add that. I'll give you about 10 minutes to do that. All right, if you, if you look up here, when we did this, previously on the GUI, that's all we had, right? We weren't accounting for overtime. So we were just saying gross pay equals hours work times hourly rate. What you were asked to do now was to account for overtime. So right now, with, with the older version, if I put in 40 and 10, 400. That's cool. You already saw that. If I did it again and I put in 50 and 10, no overtime. Would you all agree? It's just straight time. All right. Well, that's not what we want. So this one... Say bye. All right. Got a bunch of them up here, so I gotta find the right one. That's not the right one. It must be this one. I don't know if that's got four minutes. Tell you what, I'll just reopen it. That's fine. There we go. Okay, yeah. so what I changed it to was this. First of all, I came in and I added two constants. You may or may not have done this. I had one that was called max non-OT. That's the most hours that you can work without getting overtime. And I set that to 40. Again, why would I do that? Well, maybe this place either has a strong or a weak union where maybe if it's a strong union, they're able to barter it down so full time is now 35 hours a week instead of 40. So now I only have to change it from here, from 40 to 35. Or if they've got a weak union, maybe it goes to 50. All right. You know, if there is an, if there is an advantage to getting old for me, and this is not a joke, just so you know, with this new woman who they just swore in as education secretary, she believes that every teacher in America is overpaid. 
She believes there should be no unions. I think I'm going to be getting out at the right time, to be honest with you. All right. Okay. And I added an overtime rate of 1.5. Again, that might change. It might be, you know, for instance, there are some places that if you work on holidays, you get a holiday rate. You get double time. Okay? So maybe we would want to add eventually another one in there called holiday rate. I don't know. These are all the things as a programmer you have to think about. You're doing a little bit more work on the outset here. And again, I didn't do these, but I really should have come in here and said minimum, minimum hours can work. And then, you know, kept doing this. No, this is the this is the console one. It's a console. No, I thought we were just doing it. We're going to do that one next, okay. so that's fine. So you can go and just flip it around. That's not a problem. But again, what changed? This I put into two lines of code. I could have done it as one line, but I created a variable that I just called temp, and I set temp equal to max nano t times hourly rate. So if the person had overtime coming. Let's pretend they work 50 hours, okay? Well, we already saw if they work 40 hours, we're just going to do the same calculation we did before. So if they work less than or equal to 40 hours, it's straight time, okay? But if they get into this else, they work some overtime. So let's pretend they work 50 hours. So temp will be the number of, will be, will be max down OT. That's the 40 hours they work times their hourly rate. So that's going to be 400. Does that make sense? That's their straight time. Then we want to add to that the number of hours they work minus 40. So if they work 50, it'll be 50 minus 40, or 10 times their hourly rate times their overtime rate. Okay? If it makes, you know, we, we could have done this all as one line, but I put it as two lines, so hopefully you could understand what was going on. All right? So I can even come up here and say, first, calculate calculate straight time pay because that's what that is next calculate overtime pay add this to the straight time pay all right and now that I've got that I technically, I, you know, I could have just done this in gross, gross pay. I could have done it like that. So if you did it like that, you know, again, we could have just done this. If that's easier for you, that's fine. Then there's one less variable you have to worry about so I can get rid of this double temp. Yeah. All right. And then we want to make sure that when we print it out, we print out the gross pay. That's all it changed. Now, I went through that quickly. Does that make sense? Because we're going to do it one more time, and that's it for the day. But we're going to do it, and we're going to implement that into our GUI. All right? And after you've done that, you don't have to look, but please listen. We have now reviewed everything we've gone over in Chapter 1, Chapter 2, Chapter 3, Chapter 4, Chapter 5, and Chapter 6. We have now done that. When you come in here on Monday, I'm going to change it up a little bit, but we're going to come in here. I shouldn't say we didn't do six, because six is on a race. So we did chapters one through, well, we didn't do loops either. So we'll add loops. We'll add a raise on Monday. All right? We've already talked a little bit about ref parameters, but we'll do something where we've got an out parameter or whatever. Okay? That, I can't think of any other way to prepare you for taking a test Tuesday on chapters 7 and 8. All right, because by that time, you'll have written a program that's got everything we've done up until that point. So then we can plan on Tuesday, then will be the test on chapters 7 and 8. Wednesday, I will try to have the test graded on by Tuesday night, and give those back to you on Wednesday. We can go over them. All right, and we will go over chapter 9 at that time. All right. 
So again, first calculate the straight time pay, then add to the straight time whatever they had coming for overtime. There's a lot of ways this could be done. Again, this could all be done as one line of code if we wanted to do it. We could have combined that. The reason I did it as two is twofold. First of all, it, was, it fit on the screen easier. And second, sometimes to people, it's easier to have it as two lines. It's going, to, it's going to actually execute slower because the system has to break down two lines of code as opposed to one. But again, we're concerned with readability in here right now. Questions on this one? Because what I've already done is while we were working on this, I went back, again, I got, and I added this, not, no, that one's done now, sure. I've already added this to my GUI. All right, I don't want that one. I don't want to change, save, there you go. So I went into my GUI program and I put in basically the same code. If you look on the screen here, the only difference is when I got done, I copied all that over to my text box. So again, if I look at this now and I run it, and I put in 50 here and 10, now you get the overtime. So please implement that into your GUI. All right? I think like with six programs like this, that's enough to throw at you for one day. Now, I, I don't plan on putting this code out there, but if for some reason one of yours doesn't work and you want to email me later, I can provide it for you. But I'm not going to provide all six. You should be able to do, to do most all these by yourselves. And I will tell you, if you can't, you're going to struggle when you take that test on uh, Tuesday of next week. And I'll tell you what, I'll give you back your tests. I do have them here and they're graded, but I will give those back on Monday, all right?